Hello guys, this is Ronnie Velasquez with Berkshire Hathaway Home Services, California Properties and I want to welcome you to our class in Matrix. We're going to be talking today, actually we're going to be talking about more things than Matrix. See, this class is aimed to get you started when it comes to working with buyers and sellers. You know, that's what the, the goal for this class is. So I always tell people, you know, uh, Matrix, use Matrix, Cloud CMA, Realist, SIP Forms. Uh, you know, all of those platforms that are provided to you by the Association of Realtors, all right? Now, let's begin with that first, all right? Let's talk about the association for a little bit. Now, obviously, uh, in order to work in real estate, um, I highly recommend that you become a, a realtor, that you become a member of the realtors, right? And uh, the, the, I, I honestly don't know how to do my business, how to run my business without being a member, because when you're a member, you have access to the MLS system, you know, the multiple listing service. Uh, you have access to a Supra key, so you can open doors, and you have access to SIP form, which is your contracts and agreements. So you need to have access to all of those things in order to run your business efficiently. So uh, ha having said that, there's many different associations, all right? There's many different associations. So you can join any local association, when, you know, you, whether you're doing uh, Downey or uh, Rancho Southeast or Power or any other association around the area should be fine. Just find your local association for your area and join there. But the one thing that I do want to mention in regards to associations, in regards to the uh, matrix system in this case, or the multiple listing service system in this case, is the fact that uh, sometimes when you join an outside, uh, when you're in a local association, you don't have access to properties on an outside association. So let me explain you this so you get to understand this. And I want you to be careful with that because sometimes when you're working with properties outside of the area, you don't have the, uh, the right information. So let me give you an example. Let's say, for example, that you have a buyer looking for a property in Palmdale, but you are a member of the association, the local association here. Let's call it Rancho Southeast, right? Now, as a member of the association here, you have access to all the properties in the MLS system that uh, Power uh, that Rancho Southeast is a member of. In this case, uh, you're going to be a member of the CRMLS, the California Regional Multiple Listing Service, right? So, but the thing is this, uh, the, the, the properties in Palmdale are listed by a different association. They're listed by agents on different associations. So what happens is when you go to Matrix, uh, you will find some properties that are listed for sale in Palmdale. And the reason being is because the agents who listed those properties belong to your local association, so you're able to see their properties. But the problem is that you will not be able to access the properties that belong to the agents that actually work in Palmdale and that belong to the local association in Palmdale. So that makes it a little bit uh, tricky, a little bit uh, difficult, and the reason being is because you, you will see, let's say, 20 properties for sale in Palmdale, when in actuality there's about 200 properties for sale in Palmdale, but you just don't have access to that data. So I want you to be careful with that. That's the one thing that I want to make, mention to you. The second thing that I want to mention to you also is that when you uh, have a listing, all right, when you have a listing and it's outside of the area, let's say, for example, Hemet San Jacinto, you got a listing in Hemet San Jacinto, uh, if you list it here in the CRMLS, well, they don't have access to our data. We don't have access to their data. So when you put the listing here, everybody here can actually see the listing, but the agents who are actually working here at San Jacinto, they don't have access to that property. And that could be a detriment to you and to your seller because then you're missing the majority of the agents that will probably be working with buyers in that area. So you have to be careful with that. But having said that, uh, Matrix, which is a platform that the uh, CRMLS uses uh, to search for properties, is a fantastic, fantastic tool, and I, 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 I highly encourage you to go to their classes. They have three-hour trainings uh, almost every week at the Board of Realtors. They're absolutely free once you become a member, so I would highly encourage you guys to go and, and take those classes, all right? Uh, all right, let's get into that. So, uh, Matrix. In order to get into Matrix, we're going to go to www.crmls.org. And from there, you can access Matrix. So we're going to do that right now. Now, the one thing that I want to tell you about Matrix is that Matrix, I use it for pretty much anything. And I mean everything and anything. I, I have Matrix open in my computer like the whole day because I'm always using it, you know, for contact information. I'm always using it to see who's, who are the clients that are going into the MLS. I want to see what are they doing, what are they looking at, you know, what properties they favored, which properties they rejected. But beyond looking for properties, because most people use matrix just to search for homes you know like okay i go to matrix search for homes or or if I, you have a listing you go to matrix and you put a listing and that's the extent of everything that most people do with matrix and matrix is so much more than just those two, those two things i mean ma in matrix not only you can find properties for sale you can also you can also do uh, reports about the areas you can do cmas about properties you can do uh, uh, a statistic analysis you can do analytics you can you can keep track of how many properties in the market you can find buyers you can find sellers you can find investors 
using matrix if you use it properly. Now, I don't have time to go through all of those things, but I'm gonna try in the limited time that I have right now because this is actually a three hour class that we're doing in 30 minutes. In the time that I have right now, I'm gonna try to get there as fast as I can and try not to confuse you along the way. So let's get started right now. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into matrix, I'm gonna access matrix. The first thing that I'm gonna use a matrix for, obviously, is to search for properties for buyers. So I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. So let's get started. So I'm gonna go into matrix right now. Let me access it again, uh, it locked me out. So let me access it again. All right. And then I'm gonna click on the button that says access CR MLS matrix. Once I'm in there, First thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go into search and then I'm going to go into residential search. Now watch this. There is many different kinds of searches in matrix. You can search for residential, you can search for residential income, you can search for residential lease, you can search for commercial, manufacturing homes, etc. Now what is the difference between residential and residential income? The difference is this. Residential is supposed to be only for single unit properties. That is to say uh, single family units, condominium, townhouses, co-ops. Uh, stock cooperatives and things like that, right? Uh, residential income is supposed to be for two to four unit properties, two to four units properties, and then anything outside of the four units, that is five units, six units, seven units, eight units, 12 units, 16 units, etc., that falls under commercial. Under commercial, you will also find properties uh, such as commercial properties, like for example, mechanic shops, bar mechanic shops, barber shops, uh, laundry markets, liquor stores, etc., etc., right? So that falls under commercial. So uh, for right now, well, all we're gonna do right now is we're gonna be looking at residential properties. So let's get into residential properties right now really quick. So I'm gonna go into detail, and then I'm gonna find properties that are active, and then you can search You can search by pretty much anything you want in Matrix. I mean, there's thousands and thousands of different fields you can search for. We try to keep it simple, though, obviously. You know, we start, we start the search by, for example, uh, we start with active properties. We start with single-family homes, for example. We start with, uh, depending on the cities, you know, what cities you're going to go for and the price you're going to use and things like that. I'm going to show you how to put that information there, and I'm going to show you a little trick that I learned along the way that is going to help you uh, kind of filter out a lot of properties in the system. So let's start with that right now. So let's say, for example, that I'm looking for a property in the city of Bellflower, right? And what I can do is I can click on this little icon right here, and I can open this uh, new page here that, that gives me the list of all the cities, and then I can go and start looking for Bellflower, or I can start typing Bellflower here, right? And then once I find it, I can double click, and it goes to the other side, and now I click OK, and now Bellflower is there. But the way that I like to do it is really simple. I'm just gonna start typing away. Now, uh, when I start typing away, I'm gonna start typing Bellflower, and then I'm gonna separate it by a comma, and then I'm gonna put Norwalk, for example, and then I'm gonna put, for example, Pico Rivera, then I'm gonna put, for example, uh, uh, let's say Pico Rivera, Norwalk, Lakewood, for example, or, and so on and so forth. Now, what I do want you to notice here is that it's, number one, they're separated by commas, and number two, that the city name has to be spelled correctly. If you misspell the city name, it's not going to find it, and then the results are not going to come up. So that's the only thing you have to be careful with. But this is the easier way to do things in Matrix, is just by start typing away the criteria that you need to, that you need to enter there. Now, let's go to the price, because a lot of people make mistakes on the price here. On the price, uh, on the price um, field right here, uh, Matrix, what they did is that they got rid of the second field. We used to have a field that said, you know, minimum and maximum, you know, minimum amount, maximum amount. And they got rid of the second field. And what they did is they just ended up with one field. And they use now uh, certain, uh, certain symbols that we can use in order to search for by price. And the first, obviously, the first symbol is for properties above, you know, a certain amount and below a certain amount. So let's say, for example, you're looking for properties over $400,000. So what you want to do is you want to type $400,000 and then the plus sign. You need to put the plus sign. So $400,000 plus, and that's going to give you any properties above $400,000. If you want properties under $400,000, then it's minus. So you put the minus. And then if you have a range, you can do $400,000 to $600,000 is $400,000-$600,000. And I just wanted to, you to notice that. So when I come here, I'm going to do a range, for example. Like I said, $400,000 plus, $400,000 minus, or you can just do a range, you know, $600,000. So we're gonna keep this really, really simple, right? We're gonna keep this, uh, this search really simple. So we have active properties, 400 dollars to 600000 
and the cities of Bellflower, Norwood, Pico River, and Lakewood. And then we're going to add down the amount of bedrooms and bathrooms. So I'm going to put three plus. In any numeric field, you can use those, those uh, pluses, minuses, and ranges, okay? So you can say bedrooms is three plus. Let's say square footage. I'm going to do living area in this case. Living area is going to be, let's say, a thousand plus. So a thousand plus square feet on the living area. And right now, as you can see here, if you focus your attention here, as I am adding more criteria, the results are changing. So it started like 900 results, and now it went down to 300, and then it went down to 200, and now it's down to 136. So that tells you something. In matrix, less is more and more is less. That, mean, that is to say, if you put more criteria, you're going to get less results. If you need more results, you need to lower the amount of criteria that you have. You know, so that you, I want you to notice that in there, right? So in this case, we have 136 matches. Now, there's a little trick that I'm going to show you, especially for those of you that are thinking about buying properties for flip or investment properties, so you're looking for cash deals and things like that. And, and because I get a lot of questions regarding that. How do you find properties that are in distress in the MLS? How do you find properties that would be good flip opportunities? I'm going to show you a little trick that I learned along the, along the way. It's under the property description. So under the property description, what's under the property description? Usually the description of the property. So when you go to the property description, agents usually put, you know, the description of the property, you know, a beautiful property, four bedroom, two bathroom, and lake with blah, 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 blah. Now, when you find a property that may be a good flip opportunity or cash investment opportunity or, or something like that, most of them are going to say, they're going to have keywords. The keywords are going to be like fixer, for example, for fixer offer. It's going to be TLC for tender loving care, right? It's going to be handyman special. It's going to be cash deal, investors wanted, you know, all of those terms, right? That relate to a property that makes sense as an investment property, as a flip property. So how do you find those? I'm going to show you how to do that. So for, for this, I'm going to do the entire county of Los Angeles because I want to show you something before we go any further. I'm going to show you something right now really quick. So I'm going to delete these cities, and I'm just going to select the county of Los Angeles. So I'm going to go to Los Angeles County here. Uh, let me go to the county here. Let me go to Los Angeles County there. And I want you to notice that um, as of right now, let me remove the price because the price is too high. So let me remove the price. I'm actually going to do uh, 400000 and less than 400000 so as you can see here, we have right now in Los Angeles County, single family residence, active properties, uh, less than $400,000, a three bedroom plus, etc. We have 764 matches. 764 matches is a lot of properties. Uh, if you're looking for good deals, if you're looking for those investment property, flip properties, etc., going to 700, 764 properties is going to take forever, forever, right? So you don't want to do that. So what I want you to do is I want you to go to the property description field, which is right here in the bottom. I'll show you right now. The field is right here on the public remarks right there. And what I want you to do is I want you to use uh, a, what we call a, uh, we call a, uh, Jesus, I forgot the name. Anyways, it doesn't matter. <laughs> we call it something, but uh, it's, it's, it's a term to search for particular terms. So let me show you what that's called. It's an asterisk followed by the word you're looking for, ending by another asterisk. So I'm going to show you one. Fixer. Let's say, for example, properties that say fixer on them, right? Property description says fixer. Or properties that says investor. Or properties that says cash, you know, for cash deals and things like that, right? I want you to play around with these terms a little bit so you can find the terms that you're looking, that in actuality you're looking for, right? But fixer is a perfect, perfect one that you can search. So I'm going to put fixer right now, okay? So let's call it fixer here. And I'm going to show you now. The 736 matches just went down to 12 matches, right there. You see that? You see how powerful this can be? Because now you went out from you went down from 736 properties down to 12 properties. You know the 12 properties that have the word fixer on them. And if I were to add more terms, let's say I'll put fixer, comma, TLC, comma, handyman, comma, investor, and I only use single terms because. Sometimes if you put handyman special, well, some people may not call it that. Maybe somebody, they call it handyman are wanted or handyman's wanted or something like that, right? So what you're doing is uh, I like to use single terms. So in this case, I'm going to add, I'm going to add, for example, fixer, TLC, uh, and I'm going to add cash deals, investor specials, things like that, right? So I'm going to do a fixer, comma, and I'm going to do investor, comma, uh, asterisk, I'm sorry, comma, uh, cash, you know, for cash deals, for example, comma. Cash, uh, let's see, cash there, 
and there you go. And now I have 59 matches. Now remember, this is 59 matches out of 763 matches, right? So you just cut your work by like, I don't know, a gazillion percent, right? Because now you're not looking at 700 properties, you're only looking at the 53 that will potentially be good deals. And you can use this term for pretty much anything. This is one of the things that in regards to matrix search for that is that for that matter, is one of the the, the greatest things they have is this this here right here. So so use this field for pretty much anything you want. If you have a client looking for a special a special thing, like for example, I have a client looking for a hookah bar. So I put hookah, I put lounge, I put um, you know alcohol. You know those terms that are related to hookah bars and restaurants and things like that, right? So when you're looking for for this specifically, you're looking for hookah places, right? You're looking for hookah lounges, for example, right? So you're looking for special things. Instead of going through the MLS and looking at everything that is available, you're only focusing to the last, to the uh, to the, the 10 or 15 properties that actually match the description you're looking to find. So I wanted to make sure that you, you know that because uh, it's a powerful tool in the search in the search section that you can find properties that way, okay? And it's called a wild card, by the way. That's the term of what I was looking for, but it's called a wild card. Anyway, so let me remove that here, and let me show you now the next process. So let's say, for example, we go back to 400,000 to 600,000, and we're gonna go back to the city of Bellflower, all right? And I'm just gonna do one city for now, and I have 20 results. So how do you set up your buyers? How do you set up your buyers in Matrix? So the, what, it, what you're gonna do is this. You're gonna start with a search, you know, searching for whatever it is that they're looking for, right? You're going to start with a search. Once you find the properties, what I want you to do is I want you to select all of the properties and I want you to save that search. And you're going to create what we call an auto email. You're going to create an auto email. All right. So that's the next step. So step number two is creating an auto email. So I'm going to select all the properties here and then I'm going to go into save and I'm going to create the new auto email, new auto email right there. And then Matrix is going to ask me, okay, great, you know, you created a new auto email. Who do you send it to? So what I want you to do is I want you to put the name of the person, the first name of the person, the last name of the person, and besides the last name of the person, at the end of the last name, I want you to put their phone number. I'll tell you the reason why. Because when you pull out the list of all of these searches that you have, it's going to give you a list of all the names of the people. And if you have the phone number uh, besides the last name, it's going to save you a lot of time. Instead of going one by one to trying to find their numbers, you can just print the whole thing and then you can start calling people. You see, instead of having to go to contact, search, you know, et cetera, et cetera, you just pull up the list and the numbers are already there. So that's a great way of doing it. So I'm going to give you an example of here. I'm going to call it Mary and I'm going to call it Jane and I'm going to put the phone number 714-555-1212 and then the email is going to be Mary uh, Jane at uh, AOL.com, for example, and then you just click save. You see that? So first name, last name, followed by the uh, phone number, followed by the email address, and then you save it. And now it's completely saved. So I'm not going to save it right now, obviously, because this is just an example. And then the next part is the subject line. You can put on the subject line whatever you want. On the welcome email, recurring email, you can put whatever you want. Don't forget to put your signature in here. Uh, you, you can edit your signature by, by clicking on this button here that says edit your signature. And then lastly, you're going to determine when to send those emails. So how fast do you send those emails, right? Now, watch this. Um, I have my two cents on this, so I'm going to give it to you right now. The first thing is this. How, fa how often should you send your emails to your clients? Here's the problem. If you send the emails to your clients right away, or you send them daily, or you send them weekly, or you send them monthly, whichever it is that you send them, right? The problem is that the system is going to start sending out, uh, sending out uh, listings to your clients, and you don't know what they're getting. You don't know what they're getting. The listings are going out. You know, the system is sending, 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 sending in the background and you don't know what they're getting, right? So don't do that because if you do that, you're going to lose your clients. See, what happens is you start sending all this stuff and then you get busy and then you forget about your clients and they keep receiving all this information, but yet you're not communicating with them. What I want you to do is I want you to communicate with them. Don't lose control of your buyers. Call them. Every time there's new listings, call them. So I'm going to show you another way to do this, which is a much more effective way of setting this up. And it's called the concierge mode. So what you want to do is you want to go a little bit higher in here, what it says, the concierge mode, right here, it's right here, it's called concierge mode, and what you want to do is you want to click it, 
and you want to click it. Now, I want you to remove send notifications by email to you, and the reason why is because if you're setting up a lot of people on the concierge mode, and you're getting notifications of those properties via email, you're going to get a whole bunch of emails, so you don't want to do that. What you want to do is you want to be in Matrix all the time, looking at the concierge alerts, and then you can, you can send those emails from there, and I'm going to show you how to do it right now. So you select the concierge mode, do not select the alert notifications, all right? And once you have done that, you go to approvals and then you approve the properties that you're sending them right now. Now, once that's done, what's going to happen is you will see right here, I'm going to make it bigger so you can see it better, right here on the top, it says concierge alert right there. And it says, you know, 55 emails, whatever, 193 listings, etc. right? So what you want to do is you want to come here and you already have the names, the, the names and the phone numbers of the people. You can see that right there. And then all you have to do now is click on this button, for example, select all the properties, approve all properties right here, and then all the properties are going to be sent to that person. So now watch this. Once you send that email to that person, or before you send the email to that person, I want you to this, do something here. Pick up the phone and call them. Pick up the phone and call them. And say, hey, you know what, Robert? I just sent you a list of properties. If you like any of them, would you like to go see them? Would you like to make an offer on them? Pick up the phone and call people. That way they know that you're working for them and that way you don't forget about them, right? So do this every single morning. You have to, you can do this every single morning and I can promise you this, it's not gonna take you more than five to 10 minutes a day to do this particular process. And that way you keep control of your clients, you know who they are, what they're looking for, they know that you're working for them, you're calling them on a consistent basis. And don't be surprised if you're calling people and you're going to voicemails and they're not returning your phone calls. I always say that, you know, when you're calling people, you're calling people, you know, I call people twice a week, three times a week, whatever, right? And they don't answer me, you know, they don't answer, they don't answer, they don't answer. The reason why they're not answering is because they haven't found anything they like yet. But when they find something they like, they're going to call you. They're going to say, hey, you know, Ronnie, I just found a property that I like. Can we go see it today? And that's the call that I like to receive. See, I don't care about them not calling me when, when they don't have anything. But when they have something, I want them to call me back. And, and that's usually what happens. And they call me back and they say, can you show me that property? So that's, that's how we do it, right? So that's how you set up your buyers. Now, let's talk about how to set up your sellers. Your sellers is almost the same process, but it's going to be a little bit different. With the sellers, it's going to be something like this. What you want to do is you want to send them a monthly marketing report, a monthly marketing report of the area where they live, right? So what you want to do is you want to start by ser ser uh, searching for properties that are active, pending, backup, closed in the last 30 days, because this is going to be a 30-day report, so the last 30 days. And then once you, once you do that, you want to do a one-mile radius of the property, and then you want to set up that report to be sent once a month, on the first of every month. And that particular report, you will copy yourself on that report, because once you receive the email, you know that they already got the email, and you can pick up the call and call them back and say, hey, Robert, I just sent you a market report. Did you get it? And you can start a conversation there. So I'm going to show you how to do that really quick, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to search. Let me make this smaller again. We're going to go back into search. We're going to go into residential detail. We're going to find properties that are active, active under contract, pending and closed in the last 30 days. So we're going to do 30 days here, 30 days here, 30 days here, and 30 days here. And then we're going to do one mile radius of the location. So I'm going to use one example here, one location that I have right now in mind. <coughs> All right, so one mile radius of the location. And, and we have uh, single family residences, right? And I don't care much about the price because I, you know, this report is all of the activity in the area within a mile radius or half a mile radius, whichever you prefer. In this case, we have 52 matches. I'm gonna go to results. I'm going to check all of them. I'm gonna go into save, new auto email. I'm gonna create the contact, which I already showed you how to do. I'm not gonna do that again. You're gonna copy yourself on the and in the, in the message in the email. On the subject line, you're going to say, hey, this is your monthly marketing report. Robert, this is your monthly marketing report, or whatever you want to call it, right? And then you're going to type the same thing in the, uh, in the message box. And then at the end here, you're not going to set it up as auto concierge. What you're going to do is you're going to send it every month. So watch what's going to happen now. You have created a search for properties that are active, pending, back up, and closed in the last 30 days, because it's a 30-day report, within a mile radius of their property. A property that is similar to their property, I mean single family to single family, condominium to condominium, townhome to a townhome, for example. 
and then you're going to send this report automatically once a month to this person and you're going to get a copy of the report and when you get that copy of the report that gives you a perfect excuse for you to call them back and say hey robert you know what i just sent you a monthly marketing report did you get it did you like it are you ready to move forward with selling your property etc etc this is for potential sellers that are thinking about selling their home but they're just not quite ready yet this is a very, very good way to drip on them every single month and, and you're providing a service you're providing something of value by keeping them in touch and keeping them updated on all the properties that are currently on the market what the competition is how much are they selling for etc etc right so this is a fantastic Report. Next thing that I'm going to show you really quick, I'm going to show you how to create flyers and how to do buyer tours using Cloud CMA. And this is the easiest way. Uh, I mean, Cloud CMA is a fantastic, fantastic platform. It attaches to, to Matrix and it's a fantastic platform that you can use. So I'm going to show you how to do that right now really quick. So what you want to do is you want to, first of all, you want to have a property. So let's say I'm going to use the same properties that we have here. I'm just going to use some of them. So I'm not going to use all of this. I'm just going to use some of them. So let me go to the last one here. So I'm going to use this one and this one, for example. And I wanted to do a buyer tour. So we're going to select three properties right now, and I want to do a buyer tour. So all you have to do is you have to go into Actions. You want to go into Cloud CMA. And you want to select Buyer Tour, right here, Buyer Tour, right here on the top. And then when you're going to create a new buyer tour, you're going to name it whatever you want to name it. In this case, I'm going to call it Test. All right? And as you can see here, it already pulled the MLSs from Matrix. And then you're going to fetch the listings, fetch the listings, and once it finishes fetching the listings, you're going to go to Customize Report. You're going to select what you want that report. For me personally, I just want the map, map of all the listings and the listing details. If you want to add anything to it, you can do You can do add a cover page, etc., etc. But for me, I'm just going to use that. I'm going to publish the report now. And then once it's published, you will see the buyer tour as it is presented. So I'm going to show you that in a second. So let me view that. You can see here, this is the uh, map of all the properties. This is the address of the property. This is the property details. And it gives you a picture and it gives you the map. You see that? So you got that what is called a buyer tour. I'm going to show you how to do the same thing, but for property flyers. Now for property flyers, we, on, we can only do one property at a time. So I'm going to go to Cloud C I'm going to select one property. I'm going to go to Cloud CMA. I'm going to go into flyer, that's for property flyer, yes. I'm going to create a new flyer. I'm going to go to test. I'm going to put test in there. I'm going to fetch the listing. And then after that, I'm going to go to customize. And after that, I'm going to go to publish. And that's basically it. It's, it's a one, two, three step process. It's super, super simple. So just let it load for a second here. Super simple. I mean, I, I honestly, I love Cloud CMA and I love the connectivity that they have with Matrix because it makes everything super simple. So I'm going to go to Customize Report. I'm going to select the layout and the theme, all right? And then after that, Publish Report. And then after that, I'm going to open the page right here. Give me one second. And you will see the flyer right there. And this is the flyer for the property. You know, it picks up the property, uh, the pictures. Uh, from the MLS and the flyer is completely ready has all of your information your detail etc etc So this is a perfect flyer that you can use for your open houses and things like that now We do have another uh, uh, Service called VHHS resource where you can create flyers as well now The one thing that I like about cloud CMA is that it's really super easy to use the one thing I don't like about cloud CMA is that you don't have the ability to change the pictures the pictures will come uh, in the same order they are in the MLS and sometimes that can be a detriment because maybe the first picture you don't want to use or the, or the, or the, uh, the sequence is incorrect or something like that. So for that, I want you to use VHHS resource and you can use the VHHS resource if you're with our company, Berkshire Hathaway Home Services, just contact Ali so you can get an account. And, and in the BHHS resource, you can do the same thing. You can pull the property, you can do the flyers, etc. There's more videos that I have in my YouTube channel at Maya Team TV, M-A-Y-A, T-E-A-M TV, Maya Team TV. Uh, dot com and you can go and look for um, the videos there how to create the flyers all right let's go into the next platform realist realist gives you property details it gives you all of the details that you can find on a property so i'm going to show you how to do that really quick all right so in order to access realist you can do it two different ways you can go to right here to where it says realist tax right here on the top okay it's it's the link is right here realist tax 
or you can go to it by clicking on the APN on any of the properties in the MLS. So I'm going to show you the APN right here, the parcel number. So I'm going to click the parcel number, which is going to take me to the profile page. Then I'm going to go to Launch Realist, which is the new version 2.0. So it's going to Launch Realist. And once I'm there, I can just go to Print Report or Save Report or Email Report, whichever you prefer. In this case, I'm just going to go to Print so you can see what it looks like when it's printed. So I'm going to go to Print. I'm going to go to Customize. I'm going to go into um, OK. I'm going to click OK. And now it's going to start downloading all the information, which takes about 30 seconds. So give us, give us some time. And what I like about Realist is it gives you all the property information, all the characteristics. It gives you the property characteristics, bedroom, bathrooms, who owns the property, who's on title, is it owner-occupied, not owner-occupied. Uh, it gives you the chain of title, you know, who's been on the title for the last 16 years or so, who's been on the mortgage, the you know, chain of mortgages, how many mortgages this property has. If it has a notice of default, notice of trustee sale, notice of rescission, all of that is going to be there. It also gives you characteristics about the area. It gives you everything from the census data which is you know occupation of people you know incomes in the area etc etc i'm going to show you that right now so you can see it okay so it's almost done with the process it's generating the pdf right now like i said this process takes about a minute because it's it's pulling a lot of information so it does take some time so i'm going to make this bigger so you can see it better so you can see here this is a property in the city of los angeles it gives you all the characteristics of the property it gives you the name of the owner in this case is a bank it gives you also the uh, the tax, you know, the taxes that property taxes that they pay. It gives you more characteristics. It gives you an estimated value on the property. It gives you the chain of title and the chain of mortgage, so you know how many mortgages there are. It gives you foreclosure information, property map, plat map of the property. It gives you the uh, pictures pulled from the MLS on the property. It also gives you the name of the of the uh, of the uh, uh, neighbors around the area. It gives you the comps right here. It gives you the neighbors around the area. Let me keep going here a little bit. So it gives you all those comps. It gives you the uh, neighbors in the area, and then it gives you all the all the neighborhood information. So give me one second here. Well, that's a lot of comps. Ooh, wow. Okay, so it gives you all the pricing trends. It gives you, uh, let me see, median values. It gives you, uh, let me here, let me go back one more here. Give me one second. All of that data there. Ah, uh, here we go. And then it gives you the neighbors. Uh, who are the neighbors for this property? I think it gives you 20 or 18 neighbors around the property, right? So you got 12 there, let me go, uh, we're up to 15 now, and it gives you three more, so 18, and it gives you 18, 20, it gives you 20 neighbors around the area. And then you have all of these demographics, you got population, you know, how many people live in the city and the zip code, the gender, the marital status, the housing, the stability, the occupancy, the fair market rents, the quality of life, the workforce, the household income, it gives you commute method, weather, education, uh, schools, etc., etc. As you can see, my God, this is a very comprehensive report. If you're looking for a property report, this is a very comprehensive report. There's two things I like it. Number one, it's very comprehensive, and number two, it's really easy to read. And I know I'm going like a million miles an hour right now, really fast, right? Because we're running out of time. But I want you to know that the realist profile gives you all the information that you need about a property. It's a very nice comprehensive package and it's easy to read, which I like. Nice colors, easy to read, etc. So please, uh, you know, if you want to, if you want to try it, give it a try because it's going to work really well for you. And the last part that I wanted to talk to you about today, which I don't have time to talk about anymore, is about zip forms. Now, the one thing I, I can't go into zip codes is going to zip forms is going to take you another. It's going to take me probably another half hour to do that. But this is what I want to tell you in regards to zip forms. There is the easy way to use zip forms, and there is the hard way to use zip forms. The easy way versus the hard way. What is the hard way? The hard way is when you don't create a template, when you don't have any templates in the system, right? In zip forms. In zip forms, you can create templates that you can use and duplicate all the time, et cetera, et cetera. Now watch this. For a person that doesn't have a template, this is usually how it flows. You're representing a buyer. Buyer calls you and they say, I want you to make an offer on the property. And this is what you do. You go to transactions. You create a new folder. You start pulling all of the, all of the forms that you need to have in that, in that folder. Then you need to go to each one of those folders, start pre-filling the information. You need to go to the MLS and copy the information. You need to do all of these things. And the whole process takes you about four hours. I'm not kidding you. It takes about four hours to do all of that process, right? Now, let me show you how I do that You doing it the easy way. I go to Zip Forms. I create a new transaction. I apply a template that I already have created with most of the information that I need. 
So the template pulls all the all the sheets of paper that I need, all the disclosures, everything else, the purchase agreement, the disclosures, the addendum, etc., etc. All of that information is already pre-filled by me with information that I need to have there, right? Then I go to MLS Connect. MLS Connect. You go to MLS Connect. It's a button right on the top. You click on MLS Connect. Then you put the ID of the property, the MLS ID of the property, and you pull that property from the MLS. It downloads all the information into zip forms, all of the information about the property, about the agent. Once you have done that, you are basically 75% of the way there, because and you haven't done any typing whatsoever. You haven't typed anything yet. So if you're representing a buyer, I'm not, I'm not kidding you when I tell you this. The only thing you're missing is the date of the purchase agreement, the name of the buyers, the email address of the buyer, the loan amount, and the earnest money deposit, and that's pretty much it, if you have your templates done correctly, right? I have samples if you need them, so you send me an email and I'll send you the sample. Now what is, after you have done that, you go to electronic signatures, e-sign, e-sign, which is another button in, in SIP forms. You click on e-sign, and now you send those, those via electronic signatures to your buyers and sellers can sign them. And that entire process, from beginning to end, from the process of creating the transaction to send them out for signatures should not take you more than five minutes. If it takes you more than five minutes, you're probably doing something wrong. You need to call me and I'll, and I'll tell you what you're doing wrong because you definitely do something wrong. That process should not take more than five minutes. So guys, listen, I don't have time to go into SIP forms today because we ran out of time already, but I want to tell you this. If you want to learn how to use SIP forms, they have videos. Go to the help menu. They have videos in there that you can watch on how to use SIP forms. They're fantastic platforms. All of these platforms that I talked to you about today, uh, at Matrix, uh, at Cloud CMA, Realist, SIP forms, those are platforms that I would not be able to run my business without knowing how to use them and knowing how to use them very effectively so I can be very productive. So I recommend you guys to go out there and learn this stuff. If you have any questions, you, you know you can always count on me. And by the way, come to the classes. We have free classes here in the company. Contact Team Raj, contact uh, somebody at corporate office so they can give you an RSVP so you can come to the classes. They're absolutely free for everybody. But if you have any questions or any comments or anything that you need, uh, you know, call me, text me, email me, poke me on Facebook if you have to. Find me somehow, all right? I wish you luck. I wish you the best. And I hope to see you in my classes sometime soon. Bye-bye.